CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent Major Garrett joins us now to talk about President Biden's no good, very bad week. Uh, Major Garrett, uh, good morning to you. Um, I ask this first question with a good degree of humility because the answer may be we just don't know. But what do you think at this juncture are the short and medium and long term implications politically for President Biden? Well, two things have happened to the president in this week. His use of experience. I'm the most experienced. I can handle. I've seen these things before. I know how to manage them. That has been deeply damaged. Also, his competence, which was reinforced by the administration's early response to vaccinations and their distribution in the early days of COVID-19 under his watch. Both competence and experience have been severely undermined. And don't take my word for it. I've talked to Democrats in Washington on Capitol Hill. They believe those two things have happened. And once those cracks in that veneer are there, they're very hard to repair. So the president who says, I'm experienced, I've seen so many things, I've been to Afghanistan so many times, and who didn't predict, didn't see, didn't foresee, didn't plan for this kind of scenario when many people inside and outside the administration were at least warning it was possible, well, he's now inherited a situation. And the country has to wrap its head around this, Tony, Gail, and Anthony. Right now, for Americans to leave Afghanistan and our Afghan allies, the only way they can do that is with the permission and at the sufferance of the Taliban. Wow. So the president has yet to acknowledge any errors of judgment or any errors, period, when it comes to this pullout uh, in Afghanistan, which seems to be the only posture that politicians can take these days. But what do you make of the messaging from the White House? The president does one thing over and over and over. I made a bold decision. I decided to leave Afghanistan. An American president was going to make that move. I'm the one who made it. Fair enough. It's a tough decision. But as president, you own every consequence of every tough decision. And I've covered a lot of American presidents. Unexpected and tragic things happen, and you have to be prepared on the fly to deal with them. But when you circle a date on a calendar in a battle space like Afghanistan, you own every worst-case scenario. And if you don't plan for them, you will be doubly condemned by history for circling that date on the calendar and not planning adequately for it. I know. Let's talk about that date, Major. You know, right now it's August 31st. How can you say you're going to meet the deadline when you don't know exactly how many people that need to be evacuated? This is the most mysterious part of the White House messaging currently. I can only understand a scenario which any American president says, we will stay until every American who wants to leave is out safely, and our Afghan allies, who we've identified. And there's a huge blank space in the White House preparation for this. I know because I've talked to many people who work in the special immigrant visa community. And since April, when the president made this decision, bold as it was, they warned the administration, there are thousands of Afghans who work for us, who we've made a moral commitment to, mm -hmm. and you've got to process them, and you've got to be prepared to process them rapidly. Ramp that up. Do it now. We've got names. We've got assistance. We can help you. The administration ignored them for weeks upon weeks upon weeks, and now everyone is desperate. Everyone is trying to get out, and the only way they can do so is if they get a thumbs up from the Taliban. Major, the, the president is going to give remarks later today on the evacuation uh, efforts. Why do you think the president has been so defiant in this decision? And what do you think the long-term the long term impact is going to be on his presidency? Well, Tony referred to that a minute ago. In modern American politics, defiance seems to be the coin of the political realm. Just say, hey, I did it. I'm doing it. It's there. And I'm not going to make any apologies or accept any blame or acknowledge even any mistakes. But this is a classic example where, if you will, the audio doesn't match the video. Yes. What the administration is saying publicly simply doesn't hold up to any scrutiny, even casual scrutiny on the ground in Afghanistan or, as we just mentioned, in this emerging humanitarian crisis in Doha. Again, where we are not prepared. We're not prepared with bathrooms. We're not prepared with food. We're not prepared with air conditioning. And people who have made it out of the country, who we are processing because they made a commitment to us during 20 years of war, can't even find a bathroom, get a meal, or have some kind of relief from scorching heat. All of that is an enormous stress on the military and the State Department. They're doing their best they can. And I'm not criticizing them for where we are. What I'm saying is this president and his indifference to things he was warned about put us where we are. And that's a fact. Yeah. Might have been the right decision, but it sure looks and feels so bad. Yeah, it's an ugly scene in now two yeah. countries, as you point out. Major Garrett, thank you very much.